Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Saturday Zoom. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Mary. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Good morning Mary. Good morning, Kathy. And everyone else. Yes. Yeah. Welcome and thanks for joining us. And um, let's see, today's discussion is all about fat, something that I have an intimate relationship with. <laughs> but um, before we begin, as always, what's in your diffuser? I have lemon and peppermint going in mine. Uh, for a specific reason? Yeah, I just, I think when I smell peppermint, it kind of uh, decreases my appetite. Oh. And I just like the lavender added with it. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Um, Mary, the usual? The usual, yes. <laughs> Mary loves- Cinnamon and orange, I'm like, creature of habit, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, and I, I am too, to an extent. Um, today, I am diffusing Orange and Thieves. Um, and I've been dis diffusing Thieves a lot in, in all rooms and even at night when I've been sleeping because I had a little scare, a little run-in. Um, my neighbors contracted COVID, both of them. And I had to go over there to walk their dog a couple of times. Now, I didn't have any contact with them. I wasn't within, I you know, 10 feet of them, actually. Um, actually, I never even saw Denise, but um, Dan, we had a conversation. He was like way in one end of the house in his bedroom and I was in the living room. So, but just being in the house with the germs, it was kind of like unsettling to me. And I wore two masks and I wore gloves. You never know. So I thought I will boost my immune system by putting that thieves in the diffuser. And I added orange to it because I, I just love orange. So that's what I've got going. And I've been doing it all week. So let's talk about creature of habits. Um, so today's questions, we're gonna talk about fat, what it is, why do we need it? Um, what are the different types of fat? And we're talking about dietary fat. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, what does it look like if you as a person get too little or too much fat? And you might know like, well, you're gonna be thin or you're gonna be fat, but it goes a little beyond that. Um, and if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about the keto diet, which relies on increasing your fat intake. Um, but before we get into that, I gave you homework last week. Did anybody do their homework? Did anybody track how much protein they ate? No. No. <laughs> we write that down in the grade book. Uh -oh. We both got um, zeros, Mary. I think so. <laughs> um, I did, because I was curious. Because, well, Kathy, you thought you were pretty close to getting the amount of protein you needed. And Mary, you said you didn't get enough. And no. um, I thought I got enough. But surprisingly, I do not. And part of it is the plant-based diet that I really have to up my, in, my intake. Um, and I would say I, I fell within range. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't total yesterday, but I think I fell within range maybe four days, like not too far out, maybe three days. And then three days, I definitely didn't get enough. And one day I did meet my goal <laughs> and probably went a little bit higher. Um, so I need to really watch my protein because that, as we learned last week, is so important for so many different things, um, helping keep you satisfied and keeping your lean muscle. So, so Kathy, you want to introduce us into today? Yes, fat, fat, fat. Uh, would all of our weight loss problems be solved if we just got rid of fat yes. in our diets? You think? No, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> it's not that simple. We actually need fat. We can't live without it. In fact, fats are important to a healthy diet. But the key is, is the type of fats, right? Yes. Yes. And we love fat. We don't even know it. Like nobody would ever say that. Like, I love fat, but we really do. Um, so the one question is, does dietary fat make you fat? Is that a one-to-one -one correlation? And you might assume that, that 
you know, fats to blame when, um, you know, for, for our whole obesity epidemic in this country, but that's only part of the problem. Um, obesity is just, is more complicated than just overeating a single nutrient or a macronutrient as fat is. Um, it's, it's all about your calories, right? Simply put, people who get a little, like very little activity and eat a diet high in calories are going to gain weight. And of course your genetics, um, your age, your sex, your lifestyle, all of that is gonna weigh into that weight gain formula. Um, it's, it's all about calories in and calories out. But that being said, dietary fat does play a significant role in obesity. Um, you know, it's not just that, it's not the, the culprit, solely the culprit, but because fat is calorie dense, there are nine calories per gram. And that doesn't sound too much, except for when you, when you start looking at how many grams of fat are in certain foods and it can add up really quickly. Um, to contrast that carbs and proteins, they only have four, gram, four calories per gram. And a lot of times you're eating a lot less of those. So you have to really pay attention to that fat because it's more caloric and it adds up really fast. Um, and we, and this, the fat is in everything that we love, right? So French fries, processed foods, cakes, cookies, ice cream, a thick juicy steak and cheese, all of those things, right? So healthier fats are by far better for your heart, um, but all fats have the same amount of calories. So you, you have to really talk cut the total fat in your diet. And when you do have fat, you're gonna talk, you're gonna use those um, healthy fats. So that's all I got. Okay, well, dietary fat, what is fat? Dietary fat refers to the fats found naturally in animal and plant foods. We also, uh, also the ones that are used for cooking and, um, ones that are added to processed foods, which are the bad ones, really bad ones. <laughs> okay, but we do need fat. It's one of our macronutrients. The other two macronutrients are carbohydrates and proteins, which we talked about proteins last week. So fats are the nutritive components of food that the body needs for energy to maintain the body's structure and system. That's what micronutrients and fats carbohydrates and protein are. So what does fat really do for us? So um, fats, they, they can provide essential fatty acids, which our body can't make on its own. It also keeps our skin nice and soft and smooth. It can help to, if you're taking vitamin A, D and E, or we're getting that in our foods, it helps to deliver the vitamins to our system because those are all fat soluble vitamins. They help support our brain and eye health. I'm sure you've heard that before where we need the fats for our brain, the good fats. <laughs> and it's also essential um, with wound healing and blood clotting. It helps with our hormone production. It's a good source of energy. And if you don't use up your fat, just like if you don't use up your carbs or you don't use up your um, proteins in your body to um, burn off that energy, that will become sto stored body fat. So that's why you have to be careful of the types of fat and the intake amount of fat. So all types of fat are high in energy. And then it also increases your, how do you say that, Linda? Society. 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 Okay. Which means that just helps you um, feel full, feel satisfied. So you don't overeat. So that's what fats do. Uh, it also reduces the glycemic impact of meat or a snack. So your blood sugar doesn't spike and lead to a crash later. So if you're eating a big heavy meal, you want to have a little fat with that because that'll help I don't know if the term is to really stabilize, but it helps your sugar so it doesn't go up and down. 
get those up and downs. Yeah, it's, you know, like the more I learn about this and I've learned about this bits and pieces along the way, but it, I don't know, doing the research really helps it to hit home with me about certain parts of this and just come to the conclusion that it's all a balance. Like mm -hmm. you really just have to have a good balance of the protein, the fats, the carbs in order for your body to function properly. And when you're out of balance, something happens and it could be illness or disease sets in, or it just could be that storage of the fat gets transferred into body fat. So I got to get me in balance here. Um, so the question would be how much fat do we actually need? And according to the um, US Department of Agriculture's this is from 2005, so probably should have found something a little bit. I don't think it's changed very much. Um, you that adults need to get between 20 and 35 percent of their calories from fats. At a minimum, it should be 10 percent. At minimum, um, and I think you know when you get less than that, I'll talk about that later. About what can happen to your body if you're not getting enough or if you're getting too much. Um, so if you have a 2,500 calorie diet, you want 97 grams of fat. Um, 2,000 is 66 grams. And if you're on a low cal 1,500 type of diet, you need about 50 grams of fat. And I think they took like a 30% on that one. Um, but the problem is that the typical American diet is so high in fat that we're usually getting 34 to 40% of our calories. And if we really are negligent in watching what we eat, we're probably getting more. Um, and, you know, they all, they taste so good. <laughs> we just crave that. Uh, everyone's different, but 30% is what you should shoot for. Um, and then I found this really cool cal calorie calculator and it talks about like, if you wanna figure out how much you should eat, how many calories, how much protein, how much um, fats, carbohydrates, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can use this uh, calculator, which I will put in the comments, but I wanted to share it. I gotta make sure I'm on the right page though. So um, I wanted to share it because I think it was pretty darn cool. So let's see if I can find it. I have, always so many different things open. So, um, okay, here it is. Let me share that screen with you guys. And I, I hadn't seen one specifically like this. And what I like about this one is that you can choose your gender. You're gonna put in your height, all of these different factors um, that can help. And uh, you can put your weight in. I'm gonna say I'm less than I am. Um, and then you can pick your activity level. So I, you know, let's go with, I'm lightly active, depends on the day. And then you can calculate, calculate. Okay, so it says that if I wanted to maintain that 150 pounds, which I'm not, um, I would need to eat 1693, 1,693 calories per day. If you are trying to lose weight, you want to multiply that by 0.8. Okay. Uh, and that would mean that you are decreasing your calories by 20%. Okay. Now, whatever that amount is, so say, this is the amount you want to uh, maintain and you want to figure out your how many calories should be from fat then you want to multiply it by 0.3 that would be your 30 percent of these calories would be for fat and then divide that number by nine to determine how many grams of fat that you should put into your diet so just a couple of things that will help you um, with targeting 
you know, one, what should I, where should I be to maintain my weight? If I want to um, decrease or increase, if you wanted to increase your weight, you would multiply by 1.2, that would be 20% more calories. But most of us are thinking about decreasing. So 0.8, and then take that calorie, uh, new calorie total and multiply it by 0.3 to get to how many calories from fat. And if you wanna transfer that into grams, divide by nine. That, I know that's all complicated. I'm a math person. I really love playing around with numbers. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, so again, 30% is your targeted area. So can you tell us about the good, the bad, and the ugly? All right, here we go. There are two types of fats. Um, there's saturated fats and unsaturated fats. So we're gonna start with the good guys, the unsaturated fats, which include polyunsaturated fatty acids and monounsaturated fats. So um, starting with the polyunsaturated fats, those are found mostly in vegetable oils. They also help to lower your blood cholesterol levels and your triglyceride levels as well. So especially when you're substituting these good fats, polyunsaturated fats or saturated fats, it's gonna benefit you so much better. So there's one type of polyunsaturated fat called omega-3 fatty acids. And I'm sure everybody's heard that with, um, in talking about heart health, because they are very uh, beneficial for heart health. So the omega-3s are found in your fatty fish, like salmon, trout, catfish, mackerel, and, but you can also find them in, in nuts and seeds. So flax seeds and walnuts are a really good type of omega-3 fat or omega-3s. Um, so like I said, omega-3s appear to boost your heart health, but the way they do that is by improving your cholesterol levels, reducing blood clotting, and it reduces the regular heartbeats as well. And it slightly lowers your blood pressure, all good things. So the American Heart Association recommended eating at least two servings of fatty fish a week to help you get those long chain fatty acids and the omega-3s. Okay, so I'm um, just gonna kind of move through here. So, the, so it, there was one thing that Linda and I were talking about here. Is it best you get your omega-3s from food? It is best you get your omega-3s from food and not supplements. But if you already have a heart condition or problems with your heart as far as blockages in the past or whatever, it says that except for people with established heart disease, that the omega-3s would help them, you know, would be as far as supplements go. Right. Well, I think the interpretation there was get your omega-3s from food, but if you are have a heart disease or heart condition, um, that supplements will help people with heart right. disease, but it doesn't really do a lot for people who don't. Yeah, I got that a little bit. Any supplement, you know, talk to your doctor, do your research and figure out, you know, what's best before you start taking stuff. Why are you taking this? Do you need it? You know, all of that. So, right. And so, food is always best. The natural right. Way. Yeah. The natural way is always best. So, the other good guy are unsaturated fats which are monounsaturated fats. They're thought to reduce the risk of heart disease as well. And the reason why is those are more with the, um, you know, following in a Mediterranean diet. And we all know, I mean, it's always, you know, been touted by, um, you know, the media and doctors and whoever that a Mediterranean, follow a Mediterranean diet, it's good for you, mostly plants and all the healthy oils or fats. Um, so the monounsaturated fats are found in olive oil, which is very much used in a Mediterranean diet, whether it be uh, from Greece or Italy or the whole area there, they use a lot of olive oil. So that's part of the Mediterranean diet. But 
these well, it can also be found in avocados, hazelnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, cashews, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds. And then it also says olive, peanut oils, and canola oil. Okay. And I'm sharing, Kath, there's the list of saturated canos. <laughs> Perfect. Emit those and look at all the wonderful things there. Yeah. You know, butter and poultry, poultry skin. So when you eat your chicken, get rid of the skin. Um, coconut products, dairy, all the dairy stuff, all the cheese is saturated. So you want to stick to the other two columns here. And I know they have butter on there as well, but I found that uh, in doing some research, the best butter is um, the Kerrygold butter. Have you heard of that? I've it's, heard of it. Why is it bad? Yeah, it's strictly from grass fed. That's why. And it's organic. I mean, there's nothing bad, but I still use it sparingly. I don't use a ton of it, but if I'm going to make a butter choice, that's my better butter choice. <laughs> I usually buy um, Amish butter. So I'll have to investigate and see. Oh, that may be the same thing because the Amish don't use any... Um, you know, don't have all the pesticides, don't right. have all the other bad things either. So that would be another good one, I'm sure. Okay, so fat, sat, saturated sats, <laughs> saturated fats saturated. are found in, in <laughs> mostly in animal products like um, your meat, your poultry skin, uh, which are high or high fat dairy and eggs and in vegetable fats that are liquid at room temperature, such as coconut or palm oils. And then um, I know this is kind of just repeating what Linda said in 2005, the dietary guidelines recommended limiting saturated fats to 10% or less of your total calories. And the American Heart Association says to keep them under 7% of your total calories. Yeah, so now not only do you have to track your fat, but you have to track how much is saturated versus unsaturated. It's so complicated to live. <laughs> okay, and uh, we're also hearing a lot about, um, let's see, fatty acids. There are two types of fatty acids. There's a natural occurring one uh, found in small amounts in dairy and meats. And then there's also the artificial kind, which uh, we worry about most because they occur when liquids, when liquid oils are hardened into partially, partially hydronated fats. And those are in all the, you know, um, already made things, you know, dairy or not dairy, I'm sorry. They're in the baked goods, cookies, Icings, crackers, anything packaged, all the packaged snack foods or microwave popcorn, margarines. So those are not so good for us. People, I mean, they've been telling us to shop the perimeter of the store. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why, because of the, the fats found in these packaged goods. Yeah, when you're eating a cookie, you don't think about that. Like it doesn't, of course, if you're using butter or margarine, you're going, oh, this is definitely fat. Or if you're cooking with oil, this is definitely fat. But you don't think about it in those processed foods and, and how they got to be what, you know, an edible or inedible, depending on your philosophy <laughs> form. Um, you know, you're not thinking about fats then. So Yeah, so even in small amounts, these artificial trans fats that we're talking about here in the packaged foods, it can increase your risk of heart disease, it can increase, um, well, the reason for that is because it increases your LDL, which is your good cholesterol, and it'll decrease your bad, or your LDL is your bad cholesterol, and then it will also decrease your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. So your HDL kind of eats up the LDL, but in this situation, if you're feeding the LDL, and that's decreasing your HDL, you don't have a chance on that. So it will increase your, your um, 
risk of heart disease. And again, the American Heart Association uh, recommends limiting trans fats to less than two grams a day, including your natural occurring trans fats as well. And so we did already go over that nice little graph there, which we can probably put that in the comments, right? Yeah. Okay. So how do we how do we make better choices? Make sure you're reading your labels, you're understanding your labels. Um, you're looking for things that are lower in fat. And even when something says trans fat free, be aware of it because that could actually have like 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving in it. So we want to limit that. So some more helpful tips would be um, choose a diet of whole grains, fruit and vegetables, which we always have talked about. Um, try a vegan meal here and there. Select, okay, so this is the one I have a little bit of a hard time with about selecting dairy products that are skim or low fat. I think I would rather have a much smaller amount of a real fat, a healthy one, than just going to a low fat, I don't know, or skim. I don't know what the process is of how they reduce the fat in there. So that's why I'm not a real fan of, you know, the light or the skim or the reduced fat products myself. But that doesn't mean that that's for everyone. You know, if it's easier for you to choose that, then you do what you feel is good for you. Um, okay, so when using fats, use them sparingly. And um, limit your, obviously limit your consumption of high fat foods, such as the processed foods, fried foods, sweets and desserts. And when cooking, um, substitute, yeah, here we go again, substituting low fat things in there. I would just rather not use anything. You know, that would be uh, a low fat option for myself, but I would rather use the full fat organic and use less of it for myself. But that's just me. Because you don't know what they actually did. Because again, if it's low fat, like in a way it's a processed food now, right? If they've Taken if it. they extracted or did they just, we don't know the process of, did they just add less fat to it to call it low fat? Or was there a process? Same thing with, I know decaffeinated coffee, if it's naturally decaffeinated, organic, they go through a different process than a chemical decaf of a coffee. So that's where I'm getting my, you know, like I'm kind of, eh, I don't know about this, but so about that's why we're here just to talk these things out and you choose what you want to do, right? Right, because we are never all about taking one source and following it. We're all about questioning it, right? And looking right. at multiple sources and then making an informed decision for yourself and for your lifestyle. Right. And again, you know, like Linda said, we're not doctors, nurses, or nutritionists or healthcare professionals. So this is, we're just putting the information out. Therefore, you um, just make your own decision. Think about it and go and do more research. Yep. Are you good? I'm done. It's your oh, turn okay. to talk about cholesterol and saturated fats. All right. So there's always the question, you know, we want to be in balance, but what happens if you get too much or too little fat? So um, first of all, don't go to extremes. Um, you don't have to completely cut fat from your diet. You want to, but you want to be smart about the types that you choose, of course. Um, so dietary fat deficiency is very rare. I wonder why <laughs> you'd have to be eating like nothing. I think, um, you probably, I would imagine, and I'm not a doctor, but I would imagine that if you're not getting enough dietary fat, you're probably lacking in a lot of different areas as well, nutritionally. So, um, so it's very rare in people who, who eat a balanced, nutritious diet, but there are some 
there are some conditions that can put you at a, a risk factor for fat deficiency. So this is not what is caused by fat deficiency, but what might cause a, fight, a fat deficiency. So if you have an eating disorder, if you have um, a, a bowel resectioning, like a colonos uh, colectomy or col colonoscopy or something like that, if you have inflammatory bowel disease, cystic fibrosis, pancreatic insufficiency, or of course, if you're on an extremely low fat diet, okay? Um, so if you are not getting enough dietary fat, some of your biological um, processes in your body may not function correctly. They might stop working. And so you might have a vitamin deficiency, which could lead to night blindness, 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 uh, infertility, swollen glands, bruising easily, um, dry hair, loose teeth, depression, muscle pain, blood clots under your nails. Um, and so that's just vitamin deficiencies from a lack of um, fat because you're not getting those fat soluble vitamins. Uh, dermatitis can, can uh, be a, um, a sign that you're not getting enough fat, hair loss, uh, your, your wounds are slow to heal. So a lot of the things that we said before about what uh, um, the fatty acids or what fat does for our body, when you're not getting enough, these things aren't gonna happen. If you get sick frequently, because the, your dietary fat actually boosts your immune, immune system and supports your immune system. Um, so you might be getting sick more frequently. All right. So like I said, most people don't have to worry about that. Most of us have to worry about the other end, which is getting too much to a surplus of dietary fat. So, um, the big one is cardiovascular disease, um, heart disease, high blood pressure, weight gain, and subsequent obesity. If you keep gaining weight, um, you're going to have high blood cholesterol levels. So your, your cholesterol levels are going to be out of whack. And you explained that before, um, I think, Kathy. Uh, metabolic syndrome. So it's going to affect your metabolism. Uh, Pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or insulin resistance. All of those three kind of go together in that diabetes bowl. Um, and so getting too much dietary fat is, is, I think they're all connected. You know, I think diabetes and the heart disease are going to all be connected in some way. Fatty liver disease, stroke, uh, neurodevelopmental issues for children and neuro neurological problems in adults, gastrointestinal problems, which can also cause issues with your immune system and inflammation because we all know that all disease begins in the gut, right? With your digestive system. Um, it can also, it's also tied to cancer, uh, increased risk of age-related vision loss. So that's really important as, you know, I'm approaching 60, not, not this year, but next year, um, that I want to, I worry about that, you know, about my, my eyesight. So um, not that I'm going to eat more fat to save my vision, but um, no, you want to eat less fat to save your vision. Yeah, there's lots of reasons for cutting your fat and watching your fat, as you can see. So I think um, the more natural, the better, because your body knows how to and your gut knows how to take care of the natural foods uh -huh. and the natural things as opposed to um, the man-made fats. And I, I want to, let's see, we, we looked at saturated, polyunsaturated and unsaturated. Um, but let's, let's look at how much fat is in some of the things that we actually eat. So is, is this the one average? I have yeah. some windows open that when I pick one, it's not necessarily on top for me. Average. average that's burger. Yep. That's at the top of the list. 36 grams. Okay. That's crazy. 
I'm going to get my calculator out. Um, if I can find it, it's hiding behind my picture here. 36 times nine means 324 calories just from the fat in a fast food hamburger. That's not to say that that's the total calories in a fast food hamburger. Mm -hmm. That's just the fat calories. And um, that would mean, okay, so if, if that was, uh, let's just multiply it by point. No, that's not gonna work. Let's see. If you were on a 2000 calorie times 0.3, 600 calories a day to maintain, 600 calories from fat, you'd already be getting more than half of that with one hamburger. So that's not cool. And then add in the French fries, right? Or a fish sandwich is, you think a fish sandwich is better at fast food, but it's not. And I once heard something about fish and frying fish. Not sure where I got this from and it may not be true or maybe it's partial truth, but the minute you fry fish, you negate any nutritional value. That's what I heard. So, wow. I didn't know that. and this is, we know this isn't really fried fish, right? Right. Fried fish slop that they mold together and fry up for you. Um, potato chips. Put my square. These are all the bad things, right? All the bad. A slice of cheese pizza, bologna. Yeah. And stay away from any kind of processed foods. You know, your, your cold cuts are not good for you and on, by any measure. It's not, you know, we don't see balonies running around wild and we don't have to worry about balonies. It was it grass bed or grass finished. <laughs> Stay away from that stuff. Hot dogs, you know, I love a good hot dog, but you know, limit it. You can't be eating hot dogs all the time, right? Bacon, oh, I miss, I think out of everything, I miss bacon the most. I just love bacon. All right, so cheddar cheese, whole milk, two tablespoons of peanut butter. Now, I don't think of peanut butter as being bad. Um, and lately we've been buying natural peanut butter. And I actually went to Fresh Market looking for their natural peanut butter that they make and process there, you know, like process, meaning they chop it up. And I couldn't find any, but I had to go and learn how to use the machine by myself. The grinder. The grinder. I was like, yeah. hey, I need peanut butter. So I like, I I pushed a button and it started working. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm, you know, because there's so many little dials and things. I had no idea. But we did fun. that with almond butter as well. Yeah. For yeah, almond. Got, I got peanut butter and almond butter because Dick uses a lot of that. And I like it for extra protein. So um, so the like Jif and Skippy and all of that stuff, you're going to look and you're going to get a lot of that bad fat in addition to the good fat plus sugar and salt and all that stuff. So right. if you can uh, get used to the taste of all natural, go for that. Butter, margarine, oh, how I love you, butter. And then one serving of most breads, bagels, and cereals. Now one gram, that's not too terrible, right? So that's just a selection of things. I have another one too. Let me see if I can find that one. How much fat too? Oh, this one. Um, okay. Oh, hold shift to select multiple windows. I didn't know I could do that. That's kind of nice that I can do that. All right, let me get rid of the ones I've already seen. This one, is this what we're looking at? Food, Thousand Island dressing, is that what you see? Yes. Okay, so this is just a, a like a assorted list. Don't worry about the last column. This was part of an activity to see how many teaspoons of fat, or I don't know if it was tablespoons. I think it said teaspoons in the instruction, but um, how much fat is in things. So look at this ribs, beef ribs, three ounces, 26 grams. That's crazy. Fried cheese curds, 40. Burger King original chicken sandwich, 39. You think you're doing oh. good getting the chicken over the hamburger, right? Mm -mm -mm. Your own, bacon. <laughs> nope. Uh, quiche, 
48. Well, let's see, is there some place with eggs? Eggs, a medium egg has seven grams of fat. I consider that a good fat, even though it's a um, trans fat, because eggs are just, they have a lot of nutrition for you. So it, I guess you have to really just pick and choose what are you going to get the most nutri nutrients from? And it's so high in protein that it's, um, I think you get the benefits from that. Mac and cheese, homemade, 22. Uh, that's, that's discouraging. All of the things I love. I'm getting hungry now, by the way. Um, so just different things. I don't know how big this is on your screen. I'm hoping that you can. That's why I kind of leaned in. Okay, there we go. Sorry, is that better? Sorry. Um, salmon, five grams of fat. And again, that is a much better type of fat for you. Um, and it's less. Sour cream, tuna, tuna salad. Now the tuna salad, I'd like to see the difference between tuna salad and tuna fish, because I think um, if you're having tuna salad, usually I put mayonnaise in tuna salad. So mayonnaise is gonna have that extra fat and mayonnaise isn't on our list here, but you can just see that our choices add up and our bad choices put us over the top right away. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do a little calculator thing while you look at that. So um, 17 times 23, Okay, so for me to maintain my weight right now, I can have up to about 60 grams of fat a day, um, which is about, I just lost that number, about 525 calories, okay? So if you look at 60 grams, um, if I had a piece of quiche, boy, I'm, I'm almost done for the day, right? 48 uh, cheese curds, what else? Cheeseburger on a bun, I've got half of my fat calories right there. And you can't have a cheeseburger on a bun without having French fries, which is another eight. And that's for probably, they don't even say 10 French fries. Can you stop it? Only 10? No, not me. If it's in front of me, I'm probably going to eat them. I don't have any willpower at all. So I just don't bring it in the house. And I'd be careful about what I actually order. So I'd be careful. Um, so just, just a few things there. I wanted to share those about how much fat is in different things. Because I don't think we truly understand that. That, it, so that really does make you think when you see that chart. Yeah, I feel you know, like grams out there. And they're talking about a standard portion size. They're not talking about, you know, like that whole chicken breast that's right. as big as your hand. And they're talking about like a four to five ounce serving of these things. They're not talking about huge servings. And that's the problem with the standard American diet, especially if you go to eat out you are getting huge, huge portions, right? And a lot of us, and not always, we say, whoa, that's, I can't eat all of that, right? And you take some home. Sometimes you say, I can't eat all of that. And it's so delicious that you do. And that's even <laughs> worse. But it, the restaurant, you know, and if we didn't get that size, and then we are thinking we're not getting what we're paying for. Right, and we we get upset by that because we've been cust you know brainwashed and customized to custom. It's not customized. We're accustomed. We've grown accustomed to the sizes and the price, and we want our money's worth. And well, because you know, if you go to the store and you actually spend the money that you spent at the restaurant, right, you could get how many meals, right? You know, yeah out of that. Staying home is best, <laughs> but I, I love just food. that we don't like to cook anymore. You know, I don't, I, you know, if, if I didn't have to cook for my dad, um, I think, you know, if he didn't come over every night and he one night a week, we are going to start a date night where we don't have him over, but that hasn't happened yet. And he's gone out a couple times with friends, but 
you know, when he goes out, then I go out. <laughs> but if, yeah, if, if I didn't have my dad to care for, I would probably go out a lot more, which I don't know how that would translate. Um, we are having a hard time finding healthy restaurants around here because you, you don't want to go out and be tempted. But generally mm -hmm. when I go out, I order fish or I order a salad um, just to kind of keep it on the up and up. All right, we have to stay on our time today. We only have about 13 minutes left. So I want to talk a little bit about the keto diet because Mary requested a little bit about that. So um, the research so far has been shown to produce um, beneficial metabolic changes in the short term. So along with health, weight loss, health parameters associated with carrying excess weight have improved, such as insulin resistance, high blood pressure, and elevated cholesterol and triglycerides. Um, there's also growing interest in the use of low carbohydrate diets, including the keto diet for type two diabetes. So this is, um, you, when you're on the keto diet, some benefits are that you have a decrease in appetite because you, the fat and the high protein is keeping you full longer. Um, you, you increase, you have increased calorie expenditure due to the metabolic effects. So it puts your um, metabolism in overdrive and starts to burn calories more. Um, and that promotes the fat loss. So with US guidelines, um, let's see if I have this as a graphic, cause I think, I think I just got rid of it. Let's see if I can, I thought it was something else. Nope. I don't have it as a graphic. So um, what they say, USDA guidelines for, I'm gonna give you the USDA and then the keto. For carbs, USDA is 55. For keto, it's 5% of your daily calories. Um, for protein, 20% both ways. And then for fat, US guidelines, this says 25%. And keto diet is 75% of your calories come from fat. Now, after everything that we've just talked about, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But the keto diet is designed to put you into ketosis, which means that, um, let's see, it, it's a me metabolic state in which your body converts fat into molecules called, called ketones. And it uses that as a main source of energy when glucose is limited. So when you limit your carbs, you're not getting enough sugar to burn for energy and your body makes the adjustment and starts burning the fat as energy. So that's why it works, okay? The best way to reach ketosis is to drastically reduce your intake of carbs, okay? And in your digestive tract, the carbs are broken down into sugar molecules and, and glucose, so they can travel across the bloodstream and be used for energy. If your body has excess glucose, it can be stored in your liver and muscles in its storage form, glycogen. By drastically reducing your carb intake to under 50 grams per day, your body is forced to use up its glycogen stores for energy. So now it's using the fat that you, your dietary fat or no, your body fat that's been stored um, and eventually switch to ketones as fuel. And it takes time for this to happen. And it varies from person to person. It usually takes two to four days if you eat 20 to 50 grams of carbs per day. However, some people may find it takes a week or longer to reach that state of ketosis. And then anything that you eat contrary to your keto diet will throw you out of ketosis and then you have to start over again, okay? So um, the, the pros of the keto diet, many people do lose weight and feel less hungry. Um, there are some potential for controlling blood sugar and improving insulin sensitivity. And the diet cuts out nearly all processed foods, which is a, always a good thing, right? 
The cons, giving up whole grains, beans, fruits, and many veggies can cause nutrient deficiencies and constipation. Um, common short-term effects include fatigue, headache, brain fog, and upset stomach called the keto flu. And I think that passes once you get into ketosis, but that getting there is problematic for some people. And long-term health risks include kidney stones, osteoporosis, and liver disease. Um, many people have trouble sticking with this diet because it's very restrictive. Um, and for others, its rigid nature can lead to obsessive and disordered eating. So if you choose it, here are the three facts, the three things they say. Focus on unsaturated health, heart healthy choices. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but fish, nuts, seeds, olive oil, avocados are all good choices. For your carbs, eat as wide a variety of high fiber veggies as you possibly can, such as broccoli, kale, and arugula. Brussels sprouts, bell peppers, all are good. And if you find the keto diet too hard, this is your recommendation, um, contact a dietitian to kind of tailor a diet to your needs. So going back to heart healthy fats, when I did the keto diet about a year ago, I, I lost a little bit of weight, but it was hard to do in some aspects, but other aspects, I was like, whoa, I can eat bacon. And I was putting, I was making that, um, that coffee, I forget what kind of coffee you call it. And I was putting coconut oil in my coffee. Bullet coffee. What is it? Bullet, Bullet, Bullet coffee. coffee. You know, and putting that in there or butter or, or ghee or something like that. Um, and I lost a little bit of weight. Okay. However, me all proud, I go to the doctor, get my blood work done. And yes, my blood sugar had gone down. My A1C went down. I was like, woohoo, yay. But my cholesterol skyrocketed. It went up to crazy numbers, higher than I think it ever had been before. So my advice is make sure that you know your healthy fats because bacon is not a healthy fat. That's going to mess with your cholesterol. Any kind of, you know, we looked at those trans fats. You got to avoid those. If you're going to do keto, stay with the healthy, um, unsaturated fats. Otherwise, you are causing yourself other health problems. All right. That's all I got on keto. Thank you. Have you started keto? Have you started it, Mary? No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. I'm still um, looking around. Yeah. Someone suggested the Mediterranean diet, with Kathy said before. So I'm kind of, you know, looking around still. So Linda, have you done that intermittent fasting? Because that's when I used to use the, and I don't know if it was part of it or not of intermittent fasting, but I would always use the bullet coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. not put a ton of, you know, like I'd put like maybe a teaspoon of the coconut oil right. and a little bit of butter. And then I would blend it in the blender actually, because then it would make it like a little foamy. Right. It would taste I, good. I love it. And this. I would use that in, on days that I was doing intermittent fasting. Yes, I have done intermittent fasting. I think I still do intermittent fasting because yeah. I'm just not hungry in the morning. So by putting cream in my coffee, I probably negate the whole thing. But if you don't put the cream and you put the, the butter or the ghee or the coconut oil in there, um, it gets foamy and it, it's more milk-like. Like I don't miss Yeah, that's why I used to put yeah. it in the blender for um, 10 seconds, whatever. And yeah. I it did would make it seem like I had a latte. <laughs> right. Um, but the coconut, I mean, like that stuff wasn't good for me. So I stopped doing that. Um, right now, I just have coffee in the morning. I might have two cups of coffee. So um, it's not really intermittent fasting because I'm breaking that fast with the cream that I put in my coffee. But I generally don't eat until noon or one o'clock any given day. And I try to stop eating by eight nine at the very least, just because um, 
we we sometimes don't get finished with dinner till eight and I always want a little something afterwards but um yeah so I, I the intermittent fasting is one thing now uh there was something that I found today came in my email that I think might we'll have to table that discussion till later but it was a it was of interest to me and I think it went back to what we were talking about here where is it it was from Dr. Um, Z in his natural living and he talked about sorry um, and on my phone I can't really see it let's see well, I have to go so I will see you ladies next right. time oh, um, thank you it was bye about bye. coffee and fasting and whether you should skip breakfast or not and it said that um it says it depends on if you're a level one or a level four fat burner. And there is a little quiz or something to take, which I haven't explored yet. So I'm going to look into that because, um, you know, if I'm doing this all wrong and I'm and it, I don't eat because I'm not hungry, right? right. I'm having the coffee. I don't need anything else. Um, but if I'm doing that wrong, I want to know about it. So maybe right. I should be exactly. for my body type. So um, again, this is all a process. This is all about what's right for you. Looking at given, you know, given the experts, given the choices, um, fresh is best, grass fed, grass finished, uh, unsaturated fats, except for eggs. No processing. No <laughs> processed foods. You know, but finding your eating style and finding what works best for your body. And sometimes it's going to take, you know, it's a journey. It's a right. Journey. It didn't take me this, it didn't take me, you know, three months to get this heavy. It, it took me years. So if I'm going to reverse that, I have to first reverse my philosophy and my thinking, choose to do this as a lifestyle, not as a diet. Right. And then find what works best and that will put me in my healthiest prime. Exactly. Yeah. So next week, we've, we've already hit two of the three micro um, Macro. nutrients. Macronutrients. Macro. I said micro, sorry. Macro. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thanks. My brain. Uh, so next week, we're going to talk about carbs, good carbs, bad carbs and how much and all of that good stuff so okay all right all right watch on a replay thanks for joining us and you can always come on zoom we love to have you have a great weekend you too thank you bye-bye bye-bye